What's up, my Vina loves? It's Miss Vina D coming to you all from Vina Entertainment News. Milo and Kenya have known each other for years and know where they stand with each other. They've done the actual work and therefore have the history. That's not the case with Tanya. Let's not deflect. Kenya is responding and bringing sources. You made this bed and didn't know the threat count. Ooh, not threat count. You thought it was what these girls do, so it was cute. It wasn't forgivable, not forgettable. Homegirl literally placed the disclaimer to the Calvary, all right, prior to this is me being really messy. Remember that when she said that? Come on, brother. Messy is not who Tanya is at all, which is why it was poorly executed. But messy is what she was in that moment. And she knew it. Come on, my man. Well, she is messy, Brandon. But thank you for always having Kenya back okay we have preach tanya started the mess okay with kenya and the hair that was the wrong thing to do she learned today okay tanya threw her break now she wants to hide her hand everyone needs a friend like you hashtag loyal okay i'm glad she put messy cynthia out there for inviting the cookie lady imagine if kenya pulled kim's wig like sheree did Imagine if Kenya pulled one of the ladies off the couch by their hair at the reunion like Portia did. Imagine if Kenya called Cynthia a bald-headed scallywag like Milo did. Imagine if Kenya went on Celebrity Apprentice and Bully Star Jones and Latoya Jackson like Moose did. Imagine if Kenya lied on and spread false rumors about Candy being on drugs like Fraudra did. Imagine if Kenya told Claudia her bleep left her body like Moose did. I could go on and on. Kenya ain't a scent, but these other ladies can do the foulest itch and everyone overlooks it. But as soon as the queen is shady, everybody is basically, you know, losing their and if Kenya wished Nini had been beaten up by a man. Imagine if Kenya had referred to Brandon as the queen several times on TV because of his sexuality. Imagine if Kenya told a fan she hoped they get raped by an Uber driver. Imagine if Kenya would call Tanya's one egg scrambled. Imagine if Kenya attacked Portia at the reunion. Imagine if Kenya stole designer clothes. Imagine if Kenya knocked the producer's teeth out. Imagine if Kenya, if Kenya made fun of Nini and Milo mama issues. Mm, mm, mm. Child, when I tell you, imagine if Kenya is on and popping. Because of the selective outrage by the people who hate Kenya. So people basically started the imagine if Kenya segment because, okay, she came to the table and she had her moment with someone who tried to tarnish her brand and people are losing their itch when other people have done way worse and people are still applauding them placing them on the pedestal and all of that. Now, before I jump all the way into my commentary about what happened on the latest episode of the Red House of Atlanta, I do want to speak on the whole Imagine Kenya about the Celebrity Apprentice thing real quick. Because I already know there's going to be that one person in the comments saying, but Kenya stole Vivica Fox's phone and tweeted those nasty things about her. So you're trying to tell me celebrity apprentice with producers and cameras and people everywhere but yet Kenya was able to sneak into Vivica Fox dressing room or wherever she was okay find her phone and then tweet those things from her phone and there's not one behind the scene camera footage there's absolutely nothing to prove that she took that woman's phone. It's simply just hearsay. It's because this notion of black women can't get along. We drag each other. We bring each other down. And to those people, that's TV gold. People were hoping that Vivica Fox and Kenya Moore would have proved people wrong 
that two successful black women in Hollywood can come together, okay, and be nice to each other and uplift each other. The producers and the orange guy, you know who he is, Cheetah Dust, not going to say his name, who claims he's running this country, um, said, uh, heck nah, if y'all think we're going to lose the opportunity, okay, of having a ratings moment, you lie. So we are going to throw Kenya under the bus. Vivica Fox is going to fall for it. And we are going to get the drama that we need these two black women, okay, to give to us. That's what Massa always do, okay? I don't want to throw black and white and race into it, but that's the reality. And Vivica Fox took the bait and the rest is history. But there's absolutely no proof that Kenya took her phone. All people have is here say. Now that's off my chest. Let's go ahead and get into what I have to say about the episode. Yes. For those of you who watched the episode on Sunday and this whole cookie lady situation, if you do not watch the Real Housewife of Atlanta and you do not follow, go ahead and click the Real Housewife of Atlanta playlist that I have on here and get caught up because I am not doing a rundown from beginning to end as far as how we got here. I'm jumping straight into my review. So if you are lost, go ahead on the playlist and get caught up. So before I go deeper with this whole Imagine If Kenya, let me just tell you how I feel about Kenya reaction on Sunday. Is and was Kenya justified in her reaction absolutely and this have nothing to do with me being a kenya moore supporter was kenya right for calling tanya the c word absolutely not when i did my review on the real house of atlanta mid-season trailer i said that in the video i said it was bleeped out i'm not sure but if kenya did use the c word i'm not here for that that part however everything else was 100 percent valid she came to the table and she expressed exactly the reason why she had an issue with tanya she expressed to tanya i worked hard for my businesses when all of the odds were against me another point that most are missing it's not about a wig. It's not about proving if Kenya wears a wig or not. I'm sure we're all over this. It's not that because Kenya, you know, posted pictures and slideshow, you know, she wears them. I've shown videos of her, you know, doing her thing, but we all know that Kenya natural hair is long. I don't think Kenya issue is Tanya, you know, flicking the wig around. It's the context that it was presented in basically, People watching this like, oh, okay, so basically you're trying to tell us that the wig is what you're putting on your head, but your products are not really growing your natural hair and your natural hair is not that healthy and long and all of these things you're putting out there telling us basically buy my products and your hair could possibly look like this because you know we all have different genes and all of that. But yeah, and basically in a context of calling Kenya a fraud and even Tanya screamed that she was being messy. Since everybody think that Kenya was wrong for bringing a cookie lady conversation to the table and she should have pulled Tanya aside and Tanya is so classy and she's so bubbly and you know she's the love and light 2.0 and she's so great. So if Tanya is so great and so classy and she's not messy, why didn't Tanya take the wig back to Atlanta, schedule a meeting with Kenya a meeting that is filmed and basically say at the meeting with Kenya, the restaurant, wherever, hey girl, you know, we've been talking about IVF, you know, we've talked off the show, on the show, and I just thought we were building something here. I just thought we were building some form of a friendship and, you know, I'm really disappointed that I had to hear, you know, this whole thing from Cynthia. I wish you would have told me, right? But yes, your item you left with me, and I just wanted to be honest with you and express my feelings. That's what a non-messy, classy person does, right? So since Kenya is the messy one and being dragged, 
Why classy Tanya couldn't do that, right? Because all of this fake, I don't want to peach, I have too much going on, it's just all a front. She wants one. She want a peach, okay? So Kenya even contributed to that by leaving a wig, a test of Tan Tanya's character and Tanya failed miserably. And then she knew all of this would have been dragged on, would have given her a few episodes because tell me how many friends of the show out here planning trips and stuff. Yeah, Bravo is working overtime for this girl to get a peach. And so I get it. I'm over the whole wig situation. Like I was over the snake gate and all of that. But you guys know me, I'm very detail oriented. Those who are going to say, was Kenya thinking about Milo Brand, okay, when she walked into her event? Was she thinking about she was about to tarnage Milo Brand when she walked in with a marching band, okay? So Kenya was on a recent interview and she said exactly what I've been saying. She said, will I walk into someone's event with a marching band in real life, whether I like them or not? absolutely not but will i walk into someone event with a marching band on the show for entertainment purposes as she laughed through the interview absolutely okay Mala event was boring they didn't have people in there and kenya was basically sent over there and added in to just bring some excitement to the episode but Let's just take away the entertainment and it's a show and excitement and let's just talk about real life. Let's just watch it as if we are going to pretend like it's actual reality and they're not throwing things in there for entertainment purposes. Kenya walked in with a marching band, right? With her products in her hand, the goodie bags, okay? And then she said, hey, wear your wigs, your weaves, do your thing however if you want to make sure that your natural hair underneath all of that is healthy and growing try more edges and all of that and then she said some slick and funny things but that was it okay all right so disruptive to the party yes tarnishing what Milo is trying to do no messing with Milo brand and money okay would have been Kenya coming in before the event, all right, and stealing Milo wigs. So now Milo event is about to start and she have no products to show, okay? Kenya walking into Milo event with fake hives and allergic reaction and things all over her skin and all on her neck and then say I had to go to the emergency room because I decided to be a model for Milo wig line and she gave me one of her wigs to test out and the quality is so poor that I've been itching since I put it on. I broke out in hives, all of this. That will then tell the general public, Ugh, you saw what Milo wig did to Kenya? Yeah, don't use her wig. Or Kenya came in there and put the wig next to a fire and it started to burn and smell like plastic or something else. And Kenya said, this is not human hair. That's direct contact with somebody's brand in a direct attempt to destroy their brand. Walking in with a marching band laughing, she was disruptive to the party, but she did not have any contact with Milo product. She did not destroy Milo brand. She thought that happens was, oh my God, I can't believe Kenya walked in there and did that. That Kenya is so messy. I'm still gonna buy Milo's wig though. That was Milo supporters reaction, okay? okay? Now, Someone selling products and saying, this is the reason why my natural hair looks like this, because this is what I do. And then someone saying basically, no, honey, that's not the case. You are actually lying and wearing extensions and then telling people that your natural hair is long when you don't have hair that length at all. So basically you are a fraud out here. That's tarnishing someone's brand. Walking into an event, okay, like Shimia, touching Kenya Moore products and putting water in 
one of her product's bottles, setting it up with a producer. The producer's pointing at that bottle to go to and you drinking from that bottle and then he returns saying Kenya is selling water or she did not have products at her event. That's actually tarnishing someone's brand because you had direct contact and you are discrediting that person. Walking in and saying, oh my God, this place is not fancy at all. Oh my God, I'm hot. Where's the AC? You know, sneak dissing, all of those things. That's being messy. That's not messing with someone's money and brand. The other problem is for you to flat out lie and say, I attacked you or was aggressive about your IVF issues. And every time the producers flash back, even the people who can't stand Kenya are scratching their head because we are still waiting for the footage to show Kenya attacking Tanya about that. Don't also forget that Kenya is currently the ambassador for Baby Quest. So not only are you trying to come for her more hair care empire, you're also trying to come for what she stands and represent because that organization can say, oh, this is the woman that is the face of our brand talking about someone should shove the one egg back in there. When we just didn't see it on tape. So Tanya is the one who's the dangerous liar. And you know what? Kenya been saying in interviews after interviews that she hopes Tanya gets a peach so that Tanya can end up exposing herself. You could say whatever you want to say about Kenya Moore. She is not a liar and she's been vindicated every single time on that show. And so I don't understand why people can't just see, listen, Kenya had an issue with Tanya. Kenya told Tanya her issue. Tanya refused to apologize. The end. Case closed. Why does it have to be, oh, because her marriage is not working now. Oh, she's jealous of Tanya happy home. Ain't no one jealous of Tanya fake happy, okay? Because I'm on Tanya's page in the comment section and she responding to Phil. She posts a picture of she and Paul smiling, right? I'm not going to post it because it have a logo of a photographer or copyright reasons, but they're smiling. And then someone wrote, oh, don't post this picture. You're going to get them mad. And then she responded, grown woman, if you're happy, be happy. But what makes you think Kenya Moore, who was just seen laughing, happy, and holding the hand of her husband? Is checking for what you and your man got. People who felt like Kenya bringing, you know, the lady to the whole little situation in the episode was wrong or Kenya was being shady. Um, I don't see it as that because Cynthia Billy said she did the same thing. Invited the girl to her wine cellar opening because she wanted her to be able to tell Tanya herself. Well, Cynthia did not tell Tanya until Toronto since I got engaged before Toronto, so that means the cookie lady was there without Kenya or Tanya being aware that she was coming, okay? Everyone else can do the same thing and it's not a big deal, but Kenya does, it's a problem. Now, my thing is, if Kenya is talking in circles about a cookie lady without mentioning Tanya's name, then Cynthia goes and tells her version of the story, then why not bring the actual person to tell their version of the actual story since they were the one who allegedly had an interaction with your man. So I don't think Kenya did anything wrong. Like let's bring the source and have the source say, okay, from their mouth, 
this is what happened so it doesn't look like we are just adding to her story so it was great that kenya brought the lady along to explain what she had to explain and that's when i realized the whole thing was fake because her story wasn't adding up and we're going to get into that now don't get me wrong of course it's common sense to talk about you know kenya's husband and tanya relationship because of this whole cookie lady situation people thinking that because kenya is so unhappy in her marriage and things are not going great in her situation so that's the reason why she brought the cookie lady at you know their whole sit down situation and that's the reason why she also brought it up at the table to for some reason add this shick up into tanya so perfect relationship what is she gaining from trying to destroy tanya's relationship when i honestly feel after everything was exposed on Sunday and Cynthia Bailey and all of that, I now realize that the whole cookie lady thing was fake. <laughs> and not only is Tanya a liar, but the whole thing is fake and a setup. At um, Tanya, Cynthia Bailey, and Bravo just made the whole thing up to make Tanya happen. That's what I feel. I personally feel like Cynthia Bailey and that cookie lady already had a conversation. And that's the reason why when Kenya came to see her at her wine cellar, of all of the shops she could have taken Kenya to, she chose the cookie lady shop with the camera. That lady was already coerced into, hey, when we enter, let us shop for a little bit and then approach us with this tea. So Kenya thought she was getting brand new tea and it was juicy when Cynthia Bailey already knew and this was Bravo way of helping Tanya get a storyline because they really do want to give her a peach. All right, now I did a video on Cynthia Bailey because she hopped on Instagram live trying to defend herself. So I'm going to include a segment from that video, you know, to basically add more to my theory, but definitely go ahead and watch that video. It's brand new, so you can't miss it but I am still going to include that link in the description below for you all to basically watch the entire video. So let's get into that. This is my conclusion in all of this. Bravo tried to make Tanya happen last season and failed miserably, okay? They tried the whole Tanya versus Nene thing and it didn't work out. And so this season, okay, let's go ahead and try her against Kenya. And in order to survive on this show, there's two things, okay? Either you can stand up to Kenya more, okay? Or you have an army behind you that support you against Kenya more. So in that process now, Cynthia Billy decided, you know what? I'm going to use Kenya more as my scapegoat. She's going to do the dirty work for me while I hide my hand. Okay. And so you can't tell me that Cynthia gets a new business. Okay. She gets a wine cellar and then a Bailey room. Okay. In that area. And of all of the businesses she could have gone to and have a connection, she goes next door, which makes sense. The cookie lady. Now, of all of the women in Atlanta and all of the businesses out there, Tanya Mann just happened to end up with the woman who's right next to Cynthia Bailey business. Really? Okay. Kenya Moore goes to visit her friend, Cynthia Bailey. Okay. I'm just going to visit my friend. And of all of the stores that's around, I've been in that area that's next door. Cynthia takes her. To this so-called cookie lady who then comes and tell them that of all of the men she could have met it was just a coincidence that she met tanya man bravo bye bravo cynthia bailey <laughs> i don't know how people missed all of the stuff that's right in their faces really oh please okay they're trying to get Tanya a peach. She's boring. And Bravo and all of them came up with this. Not Kenya Moore, okay? I say that because Tanya's story is not adding up. And the cookie lady's story is not adding up. First, it was, you know, he came up to her, okay? 
He was all over her, talking to her, asked her for her number, and all of that, right? Then on this episode, it was she was there with her sister and someone else. And they, she was going to the restroom and he walked there with her and they had a conversation and she realized the conversation. And in the middle part of the conversation, they lost interest. Okay. Second story. Then Tanya's story is that, you know, she was all over Paul in the club. Paul took her number, but then also said that he threw it away. So why is Paul taking her number in the first place? Okay, why it couldn't just be, you know, I'm good and I don't need your number. Not only that, Tanya claimed that a cookie lady was all in his DM. Now you're trying to tell me, yes, people can unsend their messages, but that would be the first thing you would have done. If this woman was really out here and all of this really happened, oh my gosh, she would have screenshot this woman being a DM. We have no screenshot proof of the DM messages. And if they do show up, I won't be surprised if they're fake. The story is just not adding up. And that's the reason why I'm believing that this is all a setup by, by Bravo. And, and since that Billy, you know, joining the whole setup, not knowing what's going on, gets all the blame and all the hit. Mm, mm, mm. I just feel like Tanya didn't know that this whole little fake story was going to go this far. Of course, probably Paul have stepped out on the relationship before and all of that. But I just don't believe this whole scenario right here. I believe she was like, yeah, we can go there, but please don't go too far. Don't push it too much. Let, let it just be something as random as they had a conversation, but not something that's going to embarrass me and make me look like this terrible person. But at the end of the day, we all have to look ourselves in the mirror at the end of the day and we all have to live with ourselves daily so trust me tanya can put up all this fake on social media and all of that but she is the one looking in the mirror at night and knowing exactly who she is as a person and that is never going to make you feel good because you're not showing your real self and your true colors Okay. A few little things that I left out. Um, Kenya also, you know, put production somewhat on blast again for not showing Tanya leaving the table and Eva actually going there to be with her. Of course, no one wants someone to get that upset when they leave the table. But for the people who were saying Eva was just sitting there, she didn't do nothing. Well, it looks like Eva did, you know, get up to chat with Tanya and all of that. But that was cut out. Um, it was funny that in as much as, hey, people saying the girl was messy and all of that, they sure ate them cookies, though. <laughs> they sure ate them cookies. And the Imagine If Kenya segment, I mean, all of the names and the people who posted it were on the screen. So I didn't think that I had to physically say their names. If you could see it, just in case someone see it and it's like, we started this whole Imagine Kenya thing and you didn't shout us out. The caption shows the name, where I got it from, who started it. They tagged who, so everything is on the screen. Just wanted to put that out there. My review was almost an hour, but I'm going to cut it here, all right? And I'm gonna do another video with um, other things that I've seen, okay? Because I don't want to post an hour review. But look out for part two to this one right here and I mean like I always at the end of every video I don't care if I'm here for you or not at the end of the day I am wishing all of these ladies the best at the end of here my friend I love thank you all for your love and support if you're not subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to the channel go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up also turn on notifications so when I do post you where they're posted and I will see you all in the comment section remember to always have the God bless attitude which is being positive at all times and seeing the good in every situation have a great day guys God bless you